Hello everyone. In this video, I want to provide an introduction to how import statements in Python work. Specifically, I want to clear up confusion surrounding code that you've probably seen that looks something like this. I'm in a Python file. It's called hello world.py, but you can ignore the name for now. And let's say there's a function definition. I'll call it main, but the function could be called anything. It has a body that does something. I'll just have a simple print statement in here. I'll do hello from hello world.py main. And then outside of the function definition, there's an if statement that looks like this. If double underscore, which is often abbreviated to dunder, name dunder is equal to the string dunder main dunder, then call the main function or call whatever function. If you've seen some of this before and you were baffled by what was the purpose of this if statement, then this video is for you. I want to explain this by providing a high level overview of how import statements in Python work and why you might want to do this. So I'm going to scroll up to the top here and start with some high level notes. Two ways to run a Python file, which I'll put in parentheses, aka module. So here I am in a Python file called hello world.py. It's a Python module. I could run this Python module directly or indirectly. So if I were to run it directly, then this would look something like Python hello world.py. Python is the name of a program that I can enter as a command in my terminal and I can pass in a command line argument or arguments to it, such as the name of the Python files or modules that I want it to run. So this is essentially directly invoking the Python interpreter, telling it the Python script that it should execute. So if I open up a terminal in VS Code and I try this command, python hello world.py, then I see my print statement on line six execute. Here's my output. Now, you might not know it, but when you're using a keyboard shortcut or you're using this shortcut right here, run Python file, the icon in VS Code, I'll click it. This is actually running this Python module directly as well. If you look at the command that VS Code is using, it's using a conda run command. And then after that, you can see Python and an absolute path to hello world.py, which is on my desktop, and then the output. So right here, right here's the evidence here that even when you're using VS Code to run your Python file, you're still running it directly. You're still running it directly. So what then would be running a Python module indirectly? Well, that would be by importing it from another module. So for example, let's say I had a main.py, so another module, separate file, and inside of this main.py, it had a import hello world. So an import statement. I could run a Python module by importing it in another module. Let's see this in action. I'm going to make another Python module called main.py. And at the top here, I'll have hello from main.py. And then I'm going to import hello world. And then I'll have another print statement here, hello from main.py2. In fact, I can label this one one, just to make the sandwiching around this import statement really, really, really clear. So let's say I run main.py directly. I see hello from main.py1, hello from main.py2, but I do not see my hello from hello world main. But if I run hello world.py directly, then I do. So what's going on here? Why don't I see that hello from hello world main.py in my output when I run main.py? I just said that we could run another module from another module by importing that module. So why isn't it running my code here? Well, that's what the if statement is doing here. It's actually filtering how this Python module, hello world.py, is executed. Let me explain. 
I'll take some notes over here in main.py. Hello world will not print because in hello world dot py dunder name dunder is hello world not dunder main dunder. So essentially we only have this special variable in our namespace dunder name dunder set to dunder main dunder when the file is executed directly. So why don't we print out, I'll do dot dot dot, dunder name dunder at the top of both of these modules so we can see the purpose of this dunder name dunder variable, which is automatically set for us. Okay, so I'm gonna add, printing it out at the top of main.py and I'm gonna add printing it out at the top of hello world.py. All right, so we're in hello world.py, so let's start here. I run hello world.py directly, and I see that because I ran it directly, dunder name dunder stores the string dunder main dunder. This is the main module that was used to launch this Python interpreter. Now let's go over to main.py. I'll run this. Okay, at the very top of main.py, line number one, I see the output, hello from main.py, dunder named dunder is dunder main dunder. That makes sense. I ran this module, main.py, directly, so its dunder named dunder variable is dunder main dunder. Okay, then line two, we import hello world. So execution now switches over to hello world.py starting at the top. We see line number one, execute. And it says hello from hello world, dunder named dunder is hello world. So dunder named dunder has a different value in these two different Python modules depending on how that module was executed. Depending on how that module was executed. That is the key here. Okay, and then we see our sandwich statement, hello from main.py right after that. So line eight does not execute. Why? Because dunder named dunder is hello world. So this Boolean condition evaluates to false. We do not enter the body of the if statement and then main executes. So back to the comments that I was leaving here. Hello world will not print in hello world.py because dunder named dunder is hello world, not dunder main dunder. So I'll make one last comment here just to hopefully pull all of this together. So dunder name dunder is the string dunder main dunder only when this module is executed directly. So why? Why would you do this? Why would you only want some code to execute when the file is run directly versus some code to execute when it's run indirectly, right? Because I could put an else here. Why, why this conditional execution? Well, oftentimes you're writing a program and it's pretty large. The program is broken up amongst several different Python files. Those Python files may serve several purposes. One of them might be what we think of as a main module that truly contains essentially the launch script for an entire software application. But many of the files might represent modules that could be reused by other programs. Perhaps there are more libraries in the sense that they're reusable for other software applications besides the one it's packaged with. Another reason might be perhaps to have some test cases in the form of unit tests or just simple functions or simple code that should only execute when the file is being tested, meaning it's being ran directly instead of indirectly when it's being used in production by being imported from another Python module. There also might be some setup that needs to occur in a module if it's gonna be run directly, whereas if it's not gonna be run directly, it's gonna be used by another module, then that calling module, so to speak, is the one that's gonna pass in some values to initialize what needs to be initialized in this module. So there's a few reasons why you might do this. You don't typically need to put this here if you don't have one of these cases or a similar case that maybe I didn't describe, 
but for good practice, people do anyways, because you often don't know when you're first writing a Python module, what the functionality of it is going to be when you're near being done or done with the software system. So that's why this is here. Like I said, conditional execution, depending on whether the module was run directly or it was imported by another module. Now I'd like to spend a little bit more time talking about how import statements work before wrapping up this video. In main.py, we imported hello world. The way Python import statements work is first, the current working directory is searched for a Python module that matches this name. If it's found, like this case, hello world, then that module will be imported and it'll be referred to in code as hello world. So let's say I create uh, utils.py. This is a common name of a module that stores essentially utility functions or utility code that might be shared across other Python modules in a small to medium sized project. If you have a large project, then you're probably going to be breaking up your utility functions into perhaps utility classes or better groupings, better namings, etc. So let's say here I have a function, I'll call it do something important. We're not actually going to do anything, but we still need a function for the sake of the demonstration. So I'll just print out doing something important. So let's say I attempt to import utils. If utils is in the current working directory, the same directory that main.py is in, then when we import utils, Python will find this, it'll execute it from top to bottom, it'll find a function definition, make a note of its header saying, okay, I now know about this function in my namespace, it accepts these arguments, produces this return value, etc. If utils is not found, then Python's going to search its namespace looking for standard libraries and libraries that have been either pip installed or cond installed or essentially the contents of what's called the site packages folder in your Python installation. So now from here, I could use utils in order to qualify the name of the function I want to execute, which is do something important. So let's run main and we see doing something important. Now let's say I make a utils folder, I'll call it utils folder, and I move this utils.py in here. Now I run this and I get a module not found error, no module named utils, because utils is now in utils folder, right? My project is growing in size. I need to do some different namings or different groupings for my utils. To fix this, I have to put utils underscore folder dot in front of utils. Think about this like the slash in a file path. Okay, but now I have to use this entire name, utils folder dot utils in order to call do something important. This will work now, but it's kind of clunky. So oftentimes you'll see people shortening long names of modules that are kind of nested inside of different folders, which are often called packages, which is a topic for another video, but something I highly recommend you look into from here. So they'll import it as a shorter name, like simply utils. And then I can take off this preface here that's fully qualifying the name and just use this shorthand. In fact, if you've been working with Python for a while, you've probably seen this in the form of something like import pandas as pd or import numpy as np or maybe import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So that's what's happening here. These longer names are just being shortened so that every time you want to use something from that module, that package, etc., you can just do the shorter name dot. Now, one more thing I'll show you here, and then we'll call it good, is let's say I don't even want to have utils dot in front. What I could do is I could do from utils folder dot utils import do something important. And now, since I've directly imported the one identifier 
that I need from utils.py in the utils folder, I can just call it directly as if it was defined inside of this module. So there's a high level overview of working with import statements in Python. What I would recommend from here would be reading or watching a video about packages as what we've done here with creating this utils folder to group Python files together is common in even small but mostly medium to large size projects. And it's a really, really great way to organize your code and initialize code within a package. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing to my channel for more helpful Python videos.